Hello and welcome. So in this video, we will take a look at the speed controller subsystem. So this subsystem is responsible for taking the reference speed and generating the ID and IQ currents, reference currents. So the position control is not relevant for us. It is used only in the, uh, the place where the, uh, in the servo applications where the precise positioning is important. So we only have these two loops in our system, speed control and current control. We will feed the speed reference and this, this control, this block, we will see in detail how it is generating the ID and the IQ. Now, okay. So this is our FOC system as we saw in the previous video. This this particular system is the speed controller system. We will go into that. So since it is a subsystem, you can see the gray, grayish color. So this, if you if you double click on it, you can go into and see how it is done, how it is implemented. So in, in here we can see that speed reference is passed to a PA controller and the actual speed of the motor is also passed and it is generating a torque, torque reference. So inside this, there is a PA controller taking the two speeds generating error multiplying with the gain and giving the torque reference and the speed reference and the torque reference is given to an inbuilt block called AC induction motor control reference block. It takes these two parameters and along with a lot of various induction motors parameters like inductance, maximum current, flux rated, uh, rated flux. So all these, all these parameters are taken and it is generating these ID and IQ ISD. ISD stands for I stator direct axis reference current, I stator quadrature axis reference current. So this, these two currents are given to the current control subsystem. So here, if you double click on this, as we said, we, it opens this. So we will take a look at this uh, filter now. So what uh, our system has some poles and zeros. Uh, any system has some poles and zeros. So I, a zero is um, is a value or a frequency at which our system's output goes to zero. So it makes our system unstable. To cancel that, we are adding a filter which is adding a pole in the exact location where the zero is there. So these pole and zero get cancelled. So we, uh, we remove that zero. It is called a zero cancellation. So the gains are calculated. Uh, this, this gain is multiplied with this uh, sampling time. So we will see where this is calculated. It is actually in the same file we saw last time. So if you open this data file, you can see the IAR speed coefficient. It is calculated by two into pi into the system sampling time into speed into frequency cutoff. So with this formula, the speed coefficient is calculated. Now, the speed reference and the actual speed of the motor is given to uh, this subsystem. If you go into that, you can see there is a PA controller with anti windup. This is an inbuilt block. So the speed reference and the actual speed is compared with a, with a comparator. So this generates an error signal. The error signal along with the gains of the proportional and the integral, integral term is given to this PA controller block. And this is a reset signal. So this signal is called reset signal. So and this is a global variable used in our FOC system. This is called enable closed loop. So if the closed loop is enabled, then reset this system. So this is uh, naturally high. So for example, initially the closed loop, we don't start at the motor, uh, the motor in a closed loop mode. So we start at the motor at the open loop mode. And after the motor has reached some certain speed like uh, 0.2 per unit. So we, uh, we set the flag to one. So we have enabled the closed loop. So then this not gate output is zero. So if, if uh, this port sensors are rising or a falling edge, it will reset the integral term. And this I naught means the initial value of the integration. So when we are starting the simulation, the integral value, uh, that value is zero. Also, after reset the integral value, which which uh, will be this zero. And okay, so the speed speed error is multiplied with these gains and generating their torque, torque reference. So these gains are tuned by us. Okay, so this torque and the rated speed is given to the AC induction motor control reference block. This is an inbuilt block. If you double click on that, 
so it generates reference current for the foc of the motor so it asks for various detail rotor uh, inductance rated flux rated speed max current etc so when the, when the matlab any matlab model is initialized certain blocks these special inbuilt blocks call a certain script certain matlab script that is called a callback script so when at the time of initialization if you go into these blocks they there is a lot of gains here so once again so this dlg dlg stands for dialog dialog set iq gain so these iq gains are computed in a callback script at at the run time uh, at the initialization time so i will show this once again so so acim control reference and callback code if you click on that uh, you can go to this or once again so if you if you are in the documentation in the speed control system i have given where this callback script is located so the the controlled acim control reference cb stands for callback dot em stands for a matlab script file so in windows it is in this path so program files matlab toolbox motor control block set mcv stands for motor control block set and inside this there is this block so this is the entire script so i have i have given the same script here so at the time of initialization we are getting all these value the, the poles are set by the user so in the from the dialog box we are uh, we are getting and storing it in this uh, structure dot poles ac induction motor dot poles inductance etc and we are computing uh, inductance by adding the leakage inductance and magnetizing inductance and here these id and iq gains are computed here so the dialog set torque base is divided by uh, 3 by 2 into pole into so these formulas with these formulas the id iq gain uh, max i max etc is calculated so these gains are the is the where the core computation happens so once again so these are very crucial to generate the id and iq current if you go into that if you go into uh, id you will see these id gain iq gain etc so these are uh, call, these are uh, calculated when you initialize the model if you click on the run you will see the model is compiling so that in that compilation step there is a initialization step where these all these are happen okay so we will see what uh, this block so you can treat it as a black box so this is an inbuilt block so you will give you all these parameters and it will give, give the output so if you are still curious we will we will get a even better glimpse of this so the torque as we know is related to the quadrature axis current so for example the for example the rotor is here to generate maximum torque you have to be at 90 degree so it will generate the maximum twisting force so this this current which is in quadrature space quadrature or 90 degree will generate the the, the torque so the torque reference which we feed uh, here is multiplied with this gain this gain is calculated in the script which i said so this same dt block which will which will throw an error if your data type of th this signal and this signal is not uh, not the same so for example this is an integer and this is a float uh, it will it will give an error that these two are not uh, same uh, data type at the run time okay so okay we will go into uh, the speed first so the speed reference speed is taken the absolute value of the reference speed the negative is converted to positive and and just uh, for your understanding the the speed is related to the uh, direct axis current so if there is less flux i will i will show an equivalent circuit so this is an induction motor equivalent circuit and in which this back emf depends on the rotor this is the this is the rotor side and this is the stator side so if the back emf is less the potential difference will be large more current will flow into the stator more uh, more speed the motor will run faster so if the back emf is large uh, for example this is 200 volt and this is 190 volt the potential difference is between these two uh, internal uh, voltages is less so this is a terminal voltage and this is the internal machine developed voltage the difference between them is large more current will flow the difference between them is small less current will flow so this back emf depends on the flux and the rotor speed the rotor spinning faster the rate of change of flux uh, in the stator is large so the 
back end of this north the current is getting reduced but here but uh, so to control the speed we can indirectly uh, reduce the flux okay so that is how the direct axis current or the flux producing the direct axis current is also called the flux producing current so that flux producing current is directly linked with this uh, speed so we have done in uh, dc motors uh, in the machines lab we have done the field weakening control so that uh, if you weaken the field it will run faster beyond the rated speed we weaken the flux so it will run faster so that is how the uh, the these two are related and inside this we are checking if the motor is running beyond the rated speed or below the rated speed so we are comparing it against a constant so the rated speed by the base speed so the just the rated speed the rated speed in per unit we are comparing with the actual speed of the motor if it is large so if the rated speed 1500 and the motor is running 1600 it is running beyond the rated region so it is so we, we are going into the field weakening mode and if it is below the rated speed we are running in a normal motor operation so okay so if it is true so if you are running uh, beyond the rated speed we are using this equation so the speed is divided or uh, the reciprocal of speed is multiplied with the id gain so if if our speed is below the rated speed so then we are directly routing so the, there is uh, nothing here so this action block is nothing but if it returns true so this if block if you double click on that it is an if block so it will re return either 0 or 1 if it is 1 uh, this this will execute so if it is true so this block if you if you click on that if it is true then in uh, the subsystem inside this will execute if it is if it is uh, else so then this condition is true so this subsystem will ready uh, will will run so here here the i id reference current so the id reference current is calculated here id reference current so this is calculated by flux reference by magnetizing inductance by the base current so this this current is uh, getting out of this id so we have calculated id so 1 by id into torque into iq is given to the quadrature reference and the and the direct axis reference uh, the direct axis limit current is given to the uh, d ref so this is also an inbuilt block called a dq limiter so uh, on the surface it sounds simple so if if the direct axis and quadrature axis current exceed certain uh, motor rating uh, we have the motor may overheat so it is possible just to clamp clamp the motor to to its uh, direct axis limit but this doesn't preserve the uh, relationship between direct and quadrature axis so if you just use a simple clamping if the d reference is greater than the motor's uh, rated d uh, rated uh, d reference you, you want to clamp at the uh, rated d reference so this doesn't work well so it so this is the so this is the uh, d axis q axis limiter you can see the magnitude reference is generated by by using this d and q this is a pythagorean theorem and if the maximum limit is greater than so if you are running if your uh, output is greater than the maximum allowable magnitude then this saturation code executes so this uh, d saturation is equal to the reference by magnitude reference which is computed here into x max so we are clamping at uh, the maximum value if it is less than the maximum value you are within the range so you can use directly the reference current is the saturation current so when the d axis is prioritized this formula is used and when the q, q axis is prioritized this formula is used so it is not just a simple a simple clamping to the rated value i have one one script i will show so this is a wolfram mathematica script so here is a, for example assume this is a d axis and assume this is a q axis so for example both the i will i will give it as phi and phi so both the d axis and q axis currents are phi and phi so if let's say our our system demands more current to produce that torque so let's say our system demands this much torque okay so now you can't just clamp to the maximum value so this is the actual uh, uh, 
need a torque to produce that to drive that load so for example if you just simply try to clamp the for example uh, this is the demanded current so you see the angle the resultant the resultant current makes this is the d axis or q axis anything you can assume just to show you how this you cannot simply clamp uh, so uh, see the angle so if i try to clamp with the with this you can see the angle is now uh, 45 degree so the needed current is not at 45 degree the resultant flux is not at 45 degree uh, so you, you cannot do this you have to scale it proportionally to get this you can you have to scale this proportionally to get that same uh, angle same to preserve the phase relationship between the d axis and q axis you cannot just simply clamp so that is why the equations are complex to maintain the relationship between d axis and q axis while ensuring the magnitude stays within the saturation limit okay so the d axis and q axis and the output is the saturation d sat and q sat if you are well within the limit the d reference is the uh, d sat and q reference is the q sat and we don't need magnitude reference we are giving to a terminator we don't use this signal so if you just leave it as open the matlab symbolic will throw an error uh, saying that uh, you didn't connect this to anywhere so we are just using a block called a terminator okay this 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 is how the id and iq reference current are generated so this id and iq is given to this current control system and this reference speed this reference speed variable if you click on that you can see these two blocks are highlighting which means you have to imagine that this entire thing will be converted into code and uh, sent uh, will be sent to this C2000. So when you are inside the C2000, imagine yourself you are inside the C2000, you have to receive it from the host computer, the reference speed, the operator's uh, setting from a knob or anything. That, uh, that value will be sent uh, from the host computer or a PLC or anything. It will be sent from that to the C2000. So you are receiving uh, inside the C2000. You are receiving. That is why this block is called a serial receive block. So this serial receive block we will see later. So it receives. Uh, in the, if you send, it will interrupt the processor. It will it will change the global variable to whatever we set. It will hold a value, right? So this is nothing but it holds a value. So 1500, 1400. That reference speed is stored here, and this is used. So this, when you click on this, you can see which blocks are using it or changing it. So this this is using the speed reference to calculate the ID and IQ reference. So this is a very interesting system which calculates the ID and IQ based on the speed reference. Thank you.